Today we're going to be doing an old-fashioned yeast shootout. Hey, this is Manmade Mead. Today, like I just said, we're going to be doing a yeast shootout, something that I want to do with a bunch of different yeast. Today we're just doing two different kinds of yeast. We are going to be um, comparing the results um, of, you know, with these two specific yeast, how well the, the uh, Lauven QA23 ferments, as well as the Lauven D47. So um, I'm going to be putting a link to the, all the rules for the yeast shootout, um, rather than have to explain it all the time through every video, because I plan on doing a bunch of these with a bunch of different yeast, I'm just going to refer you to the rules, which will be down in the description, and there will be a video for that. But to give you an overview of the rules, the way the shootout works, I have the same mead recipe um, for this. The mead recipe I'm using is 1.2 pounds of Florida orange blossom honey, or really just orange blossom honey, I shouldn't say Florida, um, as well as a, a third of a gallon of spring water, and then whatever yeast I'm using. So that's my recipe. I'm gonna be using the specific yeast to see how they ferment. Um, there are a couple things that we have to consider when we're mead making, and one is nutrients, um, whether or not yeast use a lot of nutrients or don't. Um, so I will talk about that here in a second. There's also temperature, there's the overall ABV, all of those things um, that really make a big difference. So I'm gonna be um, considering those things in, in a small capacity, but trying to make it even for all the fields. So here's what we're looking for. Within this yeast shootout, we are looking to see and rate how well the yeast ferment um, as far as chewing through all of the ABV. These are all, or both currently at 1.100 ABV, or gravity, excuse me which means they have a possibility of about 13.125% um, ABV. So the yeast that we're using today, both can go to that possibility. In fact, most yeast, wine yeast, uh, champagne yeast, yeast we use for mead making can go to that and will often go further than that. Um, I'm gonna give you a couple stats about these two things and I'll throw them up on here because I know that you know, I'm a very visual person. So QA23, it gets you up to 14%, uh, and that uh, it has a, ferment, I can't remember the fermentation temperature range, I'm putting them up here as well. Um, it works really well for traditionals and does some great things in that regard. The D47 is the same way, 14%. It has a slimmer uh, temperature range. It does well for traditional meats too. So now, here's what we're gonna be doing. We're not rehydrating these. Um, we're just gonna be putting the yeast straight in. I'm just gonna put them in. I know that you can rehydrate and do that process. I'm not going to with this one, and I think it's okay. They will be fine. Um, I have exactly two grams of yeast per, you know, per mead. So this is gonna be the QA23. This is gonna be the D47. I'm also going to be including my nutrients. I have half a teaspoon of yeast nutrient and a half teaspoon of uh, yeast energizer in both of these cups. So we're gonna go ahead and add those in. Do Every single um, yeast need a bunch of nutrients? No, there are some different requirements. Do I wanna make this as fair as possible between the two? Yes, I'm treating this like if this were the Wild West. In that circumstance where they're gonna do a shootout, it doesn't matter how well versed you are in whatever way, uh, you gotta deal with what you got. So that's kinda of how we're doing this. Here are all the things that we're gonna be looking for within this shootout. We are, of course, going to be looking for the uh, as far as fermentation, how quickly does it ferment, and get going. That's simple. Uh, number two, we're gonna be tasting it to see how does it taste, how does it do with this traditional mead recipe. And I'm judging kind of some subcategories of that, like uh, sweetness, honey character, um, burn from alcohol, some various things like that. We're also gonna be looking for flocculation, um, which is where uh, the how long does it take the yeast to fall out of suspension after it finishes fermenting and um, you know those are kind of the main things we'll talk about through this so that's what we're looking for let's begin the shootout I'm gonna throw these guys in this is the QA23 this is the D47 I'm gonna put them right in up top and um, I'm going to stir this here in a moment but um, 
here's what I want to emphasize. These are going to be fermenting at the exact same temperature. Again, Wild West rules. Um, it doesn't really matter that they can, they're better suited to ferment in different areas. I'm going to be fermenting within their operable range. I will never, in all these tests, go outside of that operable range. The only one that might be close is the D47. I'll be fermenting at about 68 degrees, which is what I keep my house at. And the D47 can go up to 70 comfortably. Now there are a lot of people who ferment above it and do well. So these are gonna be fermenting the exact same temperature, recipe, nutrients, all of that. Let's get the shootout started. I'm gonna mix this up. I'll give you some updates on fermentation. Okay, I've got my two tasters here. We're now going to taste test the difference between these, which is the big part of the test. I wanna make sure that they, um, well, I wanna tell you what I notice in the differences, and hopefully I have a good enough palate now that I can get use some proper language to describe this. Um, I have in this hand the D47 sample, and this is the QA23 sample. Let's start with the D47 sample. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty smooth. It's got a, got a nice honey character still to it. It hasn't, while it has fermented out, it hasn't made it like so dry that it hurts, so dry that just you lose that um, little bit of sweetness from honey. You get a little bit of that on the tail end of this in the finish. Yeah, this thing, it's actually pretty good. Um, it is very round, like even at being two weeks old at this point, it doesn't taste like uh, it's very, it's got these um, maybe like too high pH level or anything that's that's going to make it um, not enjoyable. So I, I'm a fan of this. They're both at the 13% mark because they both fermented out. I do think this one's a little clearer because it actually fermented maybe a little more quickly than the QA23. Let's try the QA23 now. It smells sweeter than the D47. It, ha it smells like it's retained a little more of that sweet, uh, the sweetness from the honey. Interesting. This, the honey, it's a little more muted. There's a mouthfeel difference between these two yeasts that I didn't really anticipate. The D47 has a little more fuller body uh, mouthfeel than the QA23. This is a little lighter, and again, they're the same ABV, but I think it's how the yeast ferment. Um, this thing, hmm. Yeah, it's not, not ha does not have as much mouth feel. It doesn't have much body to it. It does retain the sweetness from the honey. Um, a little bit of the sweetness, I should say. It's, it's very round. It's a little more, um, the flavor falls a little more flat, in my opinion. I was, I was honestly gonna, I was thinking the D47 would be the one to fall a little flat because I haven't had as much luck with D47 in the past, but it actually has a little more character and it's a little more flavorful than the QA23 is right now. Now, does that mean that with some age that the QA23 will not be very good or will not get better? No, of course it's gonna get better, but so will the D47. Hmm. Yeah, this is interesting. Um, this actually has some more fruity notes to it. I'm wondering if the QA23 actually pulled some fruitiness out of the honey that the D47 didn't. Okay, so I'm gonna be using these two, or really this rubric to uh, judge these. And I'll show it on the screen what it has on it. It has a couple things like color, appearance, nose, bouquet, flavor, finish, honey character, presence, mouthfeel, body. Um, totaling up to 70 points. I'm gonna go ahead and real quick uh, taste test them, kind of give my judgments on each one. Um, and this will be useful because in the future, I'm gonna store these, well, I'll store these, and then in the future I will use them again and um, taste test again, use the same rubric and see if it improved or what changed. So let me be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and taste test them and give my rubric. Okay, so I finished my tallying. I will tell you the results. Uh, it was really close. And um, again, I'm trying not to skew this as much as possible. In fact, I, I did the D47 one first and then turned it upside down so I didn't see the 
anything that I put before and then went ahead and ranked. This is very even. Um, I, <laughs> I just now realized, I gave the D47 52 out of 70 points. I gave it and uh, I'll make sure and put this information up on here. Um, I gave it an eight out of 10 on color appearance, 11 out of 15 on nose bouquet, 12 out of 15 out of flavor finish, or sorry, flavor finish was eight out of 10, um, honey character was seven out of 10, and mouthfeel body was six out of 10. Then the QA23 got 53 points, and it was seven out of 10 for color and appearance, um, nose and bouquet was 10 out of 15, flavor was 13 out of 15, finish was nine out of 10, uh, honey character, Presence was 9 out of 10, and mouthfeel body was 5 out of 10. While the QA23 was a little lighter bodied to me, it had a better character. It represented the uh, honey better than it did than the um, the D47 did. Now we'll see with some time and some um, you know age on these which gets better. But um, I think I do think the victor of this, while the D47. In some aspects I like more, I think as I just did that little criteria, I actually realized that I like the QA23 more, and I think it has more promise. Even with it tasting a little yeasty, because it's a little bit younger, so to speak, um, I think it will have a better outcome in the end. But we'll find out if that's true. So um, I will of course put that information on here. If you wanna see that, I'll put my rubric that I use, and um, I hope that you guys will go and check out some more of these. Uh, I will have an update for these two in the future. I also have some more yeast shootouts on the way. Currently, right now, the yeast shootout victor for this one is the QA23. So, the, um, very close though. They were very, very, very close. So, thank you guys for watching. A um, bunch more of this to come. Please hit that subscribe button and hit like because seriously guys, it helps me out big time and lets me know if you like this content. Uh, I want to of course put out content that you guys will enjoy and I know that if you hit like, if you, if you know, things are, uh, if you guys are, are saying that you like these things. You can also leave a comment um, and maybe see what yeast you want to have, you know, square up against each other at some point. So the rules again are in the description if you want to go see those to hear them again. Other than that, you know, I will um, be back with some more content. So see you guys next time for the next yeast shootout and see ya.